Welcome back, YouTubers and Man fans. This is Mad Money Shot. Sniff out the man cheese as always. Got another full breakdown video for you guys today. If you guys follow my channel, you know once a month I try to give out a full free breakdown of an offense or a defense uh, from my ebooks that I typically have on my website and on my uh, Patreon and stuff like that. So I'm giving out the uh, full free Kansas City Chiefs defensive ebook this month, uh, which in my opinion is the best defensive book in the game. It's the only defensive book that I used all of Madden 21. Uh, although I am switching it up. I am using a new playbook that I will have some gameplays coming out uh, from pretty soon. I'm switching to multi-defense uh, just for the last couple of months. Now, this video has a lot of recordings that were from the beginning of Madden 21. Uh, that was back before Next Gen came out. So some of these defenses might be hit or miss based off of what game mode you play and based off of the current updates. Uh, but for the most part, every single defensive play that I put out this year uh, is going to be in this video. If you guys want to see more videos like this, uh, like I said, I've been doing it for a long time and I'd like to continue. So hit the like button and let me know in the comment section. Especially let me know in the comment section what offensive playbook you'd like to see uh, next month. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to keep doing these all the way up to Madden 22. But I'm going to at least, um, you know, if, if it's still popular, I will try to. So this might be the last one for this year. But if you guys want to see something else, let me know in the comment section. Other than that, let's go and let's get right into the video. So I already set up my audibles, you can see right here, but I'll show you which plays they are. I keep a cover two man in my back pocket. I'm always going to keep that. I also like to use the cover one contained spy, which I actually think I messed up. I think I have a robber in there. So let's go and let's put the, the cover one contained spy in there. And then the two main plays that I use the most are going to be the cover four drop once again, which is probably the best run defense out of this formation and the best pass defense which is the cover three cloud other than that let's go and let's get right into the the video here all we really have to do uh first thing we're going to do every time is set up my my run defense if you watch my gameplays the first thing i do is i pinch my defensive line you can spread the linebackers but i actually like to bring them out and down a little bit more anyway so i typically manually do it i like to have it just kind of like this i also got to make sure i'm always going to put my uh my user here on a blitz and I typically like, it depends on like what level my opponent's passing on, but I typically like to, to put this hard flat into a cloud flat. Just take away anything deep. Um, that's pretty much how I'm going to do. Because if it is something, if somebody's hitting me with a drag or something like that, I'm probably going to follow them across anyway. Although ultimately the last adjustment's going to take care of that a lot of times as well. Because ultimately I like to put one of these defensive ends into a either a bluff blitz, which puts them into a three wreck, basically taking away any middle stuff. Um, three wrecks also do a really good job of following drags and crossers and stuff like that, so I really don't have to worry about that too much. You also have the ability to put this uh, this defensive end into a hard flat underneath uh, the curl flat. That'll basically create like a Mabel concept. Um, if you're doing this, I would say you probably want to set your curl flats at like a, a little bit of a deeper depth. If somebody's hitting you with a lot of crossers, putting your curl flat at a deeper depth is probably the best idea. But like I said, I like to basically um, cloud the middle here so that I can control the outside because I find that crossers, zones don't do a great job against crossers anyway and drags anyway. So I'd rather have um, the, the middle flooded so that I can run around. If I see something, I can follow it across and I can basically, if there's like a deep, you know, anything, anything outside of the, the middle area i don't i want to be able to leave that with confidence that it's taken care of and a three wreck is the closest thing to having a second user on the defense so that's pretty much it as far as the setup here um if it's something that like i said you could also use this uh in terms of like a you know if you hard flat them both that I mean obviously if it's like a third and short or something like that hard flatting sometimes is a good idea but if you hard flat them both i also find that that helps out in run defense and in that scenario like on a, on a three defensive uh tight ends a three offensive tight end set like this i mean you can really set these guys up um, to have success but this is pretty much the look right here i mean i really don't have any more adjustments to make so switching over to some gameplay highlights i'm just going to show you guys how two completely different opponents make the exact same mistakes and these are gameplays that i just put out so i will put a link in the description below if you guys want to check out the full gameplays but basically they're going to do the exact same thing you're going to see the exact same mistakes here i basically flood the middle this play i didn't even get all the adjustments in but you're going to see there's nothing open deep they think that they might have something open short uh, and you can see right there we get an easy interception next play I do the full setup I put the defensive end here into the bluff blitz it leaves me a little bit more freedom 
him to roam around as an inside linebacker, which is basically what I'm going to do. Uh, but you're going to see the exact same thing. You're going to see how there's nothing open. The middle is flooded, leaving nothing really available short as well. Uh, this linebacker, for whatever reason, they just don't see him. A lot of times I have a safety in that spot who's just a much better ball defender, and I get a lot of interceptions that way with that, that middle flood concept. Uh, as far as the deep routes go, you can see how aggressive this cover to safety is. It almost looks like he's coming down into the flat, uh, which a lot of people, I mean, if you see the depth disparity, you can see right here, the cover three safety being back that far. It really looks like the defense is glitching out, and a lot of opponents really try to take advantage of it by throwing it up top, but you can see how well this safety gets back. This is only an 89 overall Derwin James who makes this play, uh, and you can see, I mean, this is something that you're going to see a lot when you run this gameplay as well. People think that this safety is coming down because it does come down super hard on the same play here on the cover two side. If you watch that safety once again, that cover two safety is going to shoot down like he's in a curl flat a lot of times. On this next play here, he actually stays back a little bit better, but you can see my opponent's trying to throw up, and I probably should have had another interception there. Again, next play, it almost looks like he's trying to glitch it like a cover three. I mean, just look how deep that safety is in the middle compared to that safety on the left side. This really baits a lot of people into thinking that there's opportunity to throw the ball uh, in this direction. My opponent right here thought he had something, and once again, I probably could have had another easy interception. Now, as far as the run defense goes, uh, if you watch this linebacker right here on the left, um, he just he just plays the run perfectly. And I know it's because I don't have these linebackers too close to the line to the point where the blocking recognizes him. But you can see right here, he just stays outside, fills that outside lane perfectly, and that's what you're going to see a lot of in this game. And the hard flat helps out a lot as well. Now, so Switching over to, like I said, the second defense that I use the most is the cover four drop. Uh, this right here, all I really do on a defense like this, I typically like to pinch the entire defense. Like I said, this is more of a run defense anyway. To pinch the entire defense, you're going to hit the RB button or the R1 button, depending on whatever, whatever system you're on, and that will just basically bring everything down. These guys outside here, they do a pretty good job of getting back in these, uh, in these defenses. I haven't had too many issues of these outside cornerbacks getting burnt. Um, when I when I pinch the entire defense, which some defenses I think would probably be a little bit more suspect than normal. Uh, and then I make the same adjustments with my linebackers. I pretty much just have them spaced out like this uh, because they react really well. They, if they, and like I said, when I show it in gameplay, they do a really good job of taking away inside and outside lanes. They just they don't really get touched when they're this far back. They just kind of sit back and do their thing. It's it's you know it's one of the better uh, reactions you get from linebackers. The last thing that I can do if I really want to kick this run defense up a notch is go underneath and put them in hard flats. This will make sure if they're in hard flats, no matter what, before their play recognition kicks in, they're going to be shooting down outside to take away outside run lanes. That's really the whole point of hard flats. And I feel like it doesn't do a ton when it comes to um, the actual defensive coverage. I don't really feel like... Um, you know, they st like I'm talking about the four quarters now. Obviously, the hard flats take away short passes. They are a little bit more susceptible deep, but they they really don't take away too much from the cover four aspect of the of the play. The last thing I do once again, I typically like to put these um, defensive linemen. I'm hitting D pad to the left twice, by the way, for people that are that are wondering how I'm picking how I'm getting these icons to pop up. But if you hit D pad to the left twice, brings up your icons for the linemen. Then I basically just put one of them in a bluff blitz again. Uh, this year, like I said, against run defenses, I, and in this particular coverage, I don't necessarily do that as much, but it's something that you can do once again if you're thinking you're going to have to run around and take away, you know, lanes. I still want to have that three wreck there, although in this scenario, um, you know, I'm leaving the, the hook curl, but like I said, it's, it's still the best way to go, uh, and that's pretty much going to be it for the run defense. Now, I wish I was in a shotgun. I'll go to a shotgun formation quick. One quick small tip when it comes to defending people in a shotgun with this. Um, when you make your uh, defensive adjustment, like I said, you set up real quick, just like this. When your opponent's going to come out in something like this, there's only really one run play that's likely, and that's an inside zone. So in that scenario, you typically don't want to put the, the X into a bluff blitz. You typically don't want to have the defensive end um, in the direction of the most likely run to be dropping back. Uh, I typically want to do that with the with the A route. I typically want to do that with the... I want to leave that guy where he is so that he can do a better job of trying to take away that run. So basically, if it's a run play out of this, I don't want this guy dropping off into coverage. I want him to be, to be more stout against the run. So that's pretty much the only real tip. I'll show you real quick, let the offensive guy run it. Uh, but you can see, I mean, I want to make sure that he doesn't stand up. A lot of times, I'm not even sure if it 100% matters because when it comes to run plays... I mean, I really, I really think that the I can put them all in the in the in the three wrecks because I think that the linemen pretty much just jump out and grab the uh, the, the the defensive lineman anyway. 
but you can almost see that like when you when you I'll go to the replay real quick when you go when you go look at him it just seems like they're giving up space like like you see that he, he does back up enough you see how both of them just kind of back up enough that they're not coming forward and it feels like the entire line gets a push that it wouldn't get otherwise so it's definitely and then you can see him right here this defensive tackle he's the one guy i mean he still kind of gets pushed back but at the end of the day, you can just see it's noticeable that they're giving up space the second the play starts. So make sure that if you're going against shotgun, you just want to, it's a small adjustment, but it's an important one. Just make sure that you, you don't bluff blitz the guy that's that's in the way of a inside zone. It's really that simple. I mean, I use the 3-3-5 a lot. Um, this is not going to necessarily be the defense that I focus on today, but it's part of the scheme. The play itself, it's going to be the same play in three different formations, but it's the cover four match. The cover four drop is what it's called in the 3 3 5. If I go to my second favorite formation, which is one I find myself using more and more, uh, it's the cover four quarters. All I really do is match personnel. I have um, out of the nickel 3 3 5, if anybody's running three wide receiver sets, I'm typically going to go with a 3 3 5 version. If they go to like a two tight end or anything that's more of a, a running formation, I go right to my 4 3 normal as my base. Uh, as far as the 4 3 normal goes, this is probably one of my new or my newer favorite defenses. If you're a mutt player like I am, one of the things that I typically do, I, do, I typically take uh, my outside linebacker, which is Derek Thomas. He's more of an edge rusher, and I put him at a defensive end spot. Then I move that defensive end into uh, defensive tackle just so I can have a lot of speed. I take Chase Young, who I have, and move him inside. Uh, and then I typically put my best coverage linebacker, who's my backup linebacker, and Patrick Willis, at the outside linebacker spot. So you want your linebackers to have high coverage abilities, uh, which, you know, as high zone coverage abilities as possible. And obviously speed's important as well um so i have uh, sam mills uh you know, Patrick Willis and Landon Collins, oops, Landon Collins, all have 80 or higher zones uh, that are even higher because of the chems. So that's pretty much how I go with that. On the back side, these back four guys here, these safeties, uh, which I'll put Juan Thorhill in there, these safeties and these um, the cornerbacks, I typically, as far as abilities go, once again, if you're a mutt player, I have um, my favorite uh, abilities on them are going to be Acrobat and Mid-Zone KO. Mid-Zone KO means that these guys will react and as fast as soon as the ball is thrown or uh, as soon, you know they basically react a lot faster so that's probably the most important part when it comes to those guys now before I get into this video as always this video is brought to you by my coin sponsors at MMOXP.com lots of new cards dropping so if you guys want to get your mutt team up make sure to check them out link in the description below and use discount code money shot to get five percent off what's already the cheapest coins on the market now as far as the setup goes on this particular defense um, there's a couple of different steps I can do this this setup really quick because I do this all the time but you can see how quickly I can transform this defense one of the most important things when it comes to this defense is these safeties these safeties in the back here uh, they really make the biggest impact on this defense whether it's run or pass uh, they're really going to be the MVP of this defense so what I want to do is I want to put them in the best position uh, to basically make as high an impact as possible and the way to do that is simple the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Y uh, Y triangle if you're on PlayStation and I'm going to base line then I'm going to do the Y triangle again and I'm going to show blitz you can see how the show blitz basically brings everybody down to the box but those cornerbacks on the outside are a little bit too far down they're a little bit vulnerable so the last thing that I'm going to do and this is kind of new is I'm going to base a line again and now you can see those cornerbacks back off in a more respectable uh, position but the but the safeties stay the safeties down in the box are the most important part of this defense so you can see now that they're down to the box uh, they're gonna you know for two 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 reasons really if they're down in the box like this they're going to uh, react to the receivers faster and they're also going to react to the run faster uh, which is obviously what I want because I don't know if my opponent's gonna pass or run I have no idea I hit random uh, the last step I typically I mean you can see I already put my linebacker on a, uh, a user blitz based off the fact it's just for coverage reasons it just takes away change of direction penalty if you guys don't know that uh, but the last step is going to be uh, I could either if I want to it's really up to you but I like to play underneath coverage a lot I like to play hard flats uh, that's going to help out a lot in the run because you can see these guys are going to start off at this type of angle and then they can basically take away stretch plays and stuff like that. Uh, and it's also going to help in the pass because um, if you hard flat, I wouldn't necessarily say hard flat against a three wide receiver set like this, but if you hard flat against like a two wide receiver set or something like that or something you're expecting to run, it's going to be best. Uh, but without a doubt, this is pretty much the setup I like to run a lot. The hard flats can get you in trouble. Like I said, three wide receiver set, I wouldn't do that. But against something where I could be expecting to run, it's definitely a better way to go. And then the last step 
is I typically would take the uh, the B, um, you know, either one of the defensive ends, whichever one is not your better pass rusher. Like right here, Frank Clark's on this side. So I typically would, and a lot of times I'll have a linebacker in these spots as well, but I typically would want to uh, put one of these defensive uh, ends into a, uh, a, a curl flat or a hard flat, uh, but I typically like to put them into a bluff blitz. The bluff blitz is definitely going to be um, the best way to go to so the point that I can basically leave the center of the field because that three right there is going to do a pretty good job of uh, basically being the user middle linebacker for me. Or you can just leave him blitzing. If you want to get more pressure or you expect a run, you leave him blitzing. But you can see there's a lot of different things you can do. Um, I find myself also, as you can see here, we get a run play on the first play. Uh, I'm going to guess without watching that the safety shot in because that's what that looked like. The way that this defense runs, if you don't guess pass, a lot of times these safeties will walk forward immediately. As you can see right there on both sides, you know, even though uh, to, uh, who was that? Uh, Matthew did a much better job. I think he actually ended up making the play. Uh, if you guess pass, they'll drop back. And I'll show you on the next play. I'll guess pass. Then they'll drop back just like safeties do. But if you don't, they and as long as you have good safeties that have high recognition, they're going to do something like this where they shoot forward and play the run. I didn't do anything. You know what I mean? Like, uh, tire, that's, that's part of the brilliance of this defense and part of the brilliance of this run defense. Based off the fact that they're so close to the action, they react much faster. Like I said, this guy here, he's obviously the lesser too. He just ran into nobody. He ran into a receiver. But you can see my better safety just walked right forward and made a stop for a loss, a three- or four-yard loss, uh, based off of just the alignment, based off of just the setup. So, like I said, this here, if you don't guess pass, if you do nothing, the play recognition will take over, and these guys, these safeties, will make a lot of plays for you. Uh, but I'll show you what happens if you guess pass here next. So now I'm in a, uh, I'm just in a run play, and I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to guess pass, and you're going to watch how these safeties drop off the, uh, drop off the clicker. They just basically drop back and take themselves out of the play, and they're much less effective. So it, it really it comes in large part to their play recognition if you don't guess pass but since i did guess pass i forced their hand and now you're going to see how these these safeties drop back they didn't drop back too far you can see tyron matthew obviously uh reacted a lot better but that's still you know that's still uh, uh yardage lost because if he was walking forward and running up to play his gap like he did on the first play then obviously that we'd be shutting this uh you know this play down a lot quicker so like i said if i don't guess pass like right here i'm not going to guess pass and you're going to see how the exact same play, exact same setup, these safeties are going to walk forward and basically shoot their gaps. You can see there's nothing there. You know what I mean? That's the point. This is a completely shut down run defense as long as you don't guess pass. So like I said right here, these safeties, you know, I don't. that's why I'm not worried about closing up the gap. Like typically I'd want to close up the gap between the defensive end and the defensive tackle. But watch how these linebackers, I didn't even hard flat by the way, but watch how these guys fill their lanes. Where are you running? right there you know what i mean like that's that's why this is such a good defense where where's the opportunity to run this guy here took away the outside took away the stretch and that safety just comes flying right through that gap to the point where there's nowhere to go and then like i said obviously these cornerbacks like i said it looks like a run commit the way that these guys are flying forward almost looks like you're run committing every play but those cornerbacks are dropping back because they're they're handling their business and then obviously um you know this guy here does a pretty good job he's essentially acting like a man and that man coverage is tight so like i said this defense here to me is one of the best defenses to run the game right now so i'm going to show you guys something else important about that second baseline as well if i baseline once and i show blitz um, like I said, number one, these cornerbacks are vulnerable. Uh, but number two, and this is probably more important, is I can't do any other adjustments. If I want to pinch my defense or if I want to spread my linebackers or whatever, I can't do any of those things until I do that second base align. Now you can see that they were just waiting, and you can see that the, 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 the alignments basically change. So now that I have that base align, uh, that second base align in, I can do things like if I want to, if I suspect the run to the, uh, the right, I can just basically shift my um, yeah I can shift my entire defense again you know what I mean like I can do whatever I want now with the front seven which I wouldn't have been able to do uh, without that second baseline but just to show you guys too I'm gonna go ahead I'm gonna guess pass this time and just to show you guys how these safeties react they react way differently this time uh, than they did the last time and like I said part of it's also due um, to the fact that we have a, a pass 
So we're going to do that setup one more time. Like I said, I really didn't anticipate running this against the computer too much. Uh, but you can see, it's real simple. It's real quick. It's wide triangle, uh, left stick to the right, wide triangle, left stick to the left, wide triangle, left stick to the right one more time. Uh, and then the last thing, like I said, a lot of times I like the hard flat. Uh, because especially if I'm expecting to run and then I can if I really want to I can kick it up a notch I can try to you know pinch this so if I expect them to do like something like you know if I'm in a inside the five or something like that and I want to run this defense I could do something where I'm pinching the defensive line although I still think that the better way to go is the original setup but you can see there's just nothing really here this is just a, it's a really shut down run defense and it's a really good pass defense as well uh, but ultimately as far as the pass defense goes um, I really do think that uh, like I said I, I typically run the three through five more uh, but you can get good pass defense from a defense like this so let's go and let's pick the cover four quarters because in my opinion it's the better of the two and then on the other side uh, we're just going to pick we'll pick random single back and then we'll also switch up and pick random gun i guess now as far as the defensive side goes um, i did start off with a uh, random single back because i do think that um, you know, when I first came out, it was an empty back five wide set. I'm going to give myself a challenge. I'm going to I'm going to pick plays from both formations as this video goes forward to show you that it works against just about anything. Uh, but ultimately, this setup it could be simpler. Uh, it's very similar to a setup that I just put out from a different cover four defense, a different formation entirely. All I'm really going to do is I'm going to hit Y triangle, then I'm going to base the line, hit Y triangle again, then I'm going to show blitz, then I'm going to hit Y triangle again, and base the line one more time. Uh, basically, all all of that is really just to get my cornerbacks and safeties where I want them. Then I'm going to pinch my defensive line, which is DB to the or um, D pad to the left and then down to pinch. Uh, and that's pretty much it. This is pretty much how I could set up this defense if I wanted to run this like a base defense. A lot of times I would, you know, hard flat and stuff like that. But if I want to make a blitz. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically send them all, which is deep ahead to the right and then down on the uh, on the right stick to blitz all. This is how I make it a, a really fast blitz. This is going to be to the point where I have two different ways to run this. I can, if, if they have, don't have a lot of receivers, I can use one of these DBs. Like sometimes I'll use her, the safety on this side because there's only uh, one receiver over there. There's three receivers on the other side, so I can basically just borrow this guy and kind of play more middle linebacker. Or if there's a lot of receivers I can just use or this guy come down to the gap and then back away and get into coverage so essentially I have five guys six guys coming in um, I'll go ahead and let the play run just to show you guys how quickly this can get through uh, because Tom Brady's just gonna get sacked instantly now that was a play action like I said I picked random so we're going to do that again. Like I said, I picked random single back. We'll pick random shotgun here in a minute uh, to show you that it really doesn't matter. But this is pretty much the setup. To me, it's pretty quick. To me, I mean, I did it there within a, a second or two of talking. Um, I don't think it's best to run this, even though I'm running against single back. I don't think it's best to run against single back because it's not the best run defense. It's a good run defense, but it's too blitz heavy to be a, a good run defense. The last part that I really didn't mention as well uh, would be to guess pass. If you guess pass... Um, these DB or these cornerbacks. Number one, the DBs will react faster. But number two, the the, uh, the edge rushers uh, will ignore any play action. And they'll go right for the quarterback. So that will make the blitz. That will turn the blitz up a notch. Um, but like I said, that that's also what makes this kind of a risky run defense. Now these safeties uh, will do a pretty good job if you don't guess pass at helping with the run. Uh, but ultimately, like I said, I'm trying to uh, I'm trying to send some heat here. So in this scenario. Once again, I can use one of these safeties because there's three tight ends, so I'm not really too concerned about getting burned on the backside. The only real receiver on the field that can do that um, is going to be pretty much manned up. So, like I said, there are times where I'll just let this middle linebacker go in, and now you can see, like I said, it's not necessarily the best run defense if I didn't take care of that. It's a good run defense if you were to set it up like a normal defense. Like, this is a good run defense just like this, but, you know, I'm, I'm not necessarily... Um, that's not necessarily the goal. You can see the safety should go flying in. That's why I was saying earlier um, that this, when I originally made this video, uh, was about the run defense. If I don't guess pass, if I do this setup, you can see once again, we got one wide receiver, we, so we have one cornerback playing back. That's because I base aligned twice. That's why the cornerbacks play back. But ultimately, if I don't guess pass, if I just set this up like a, like a run defense with the hard flats, you're going to see how these safeties come flying forward. And that's because they're playing in the box. You can see both 
both of them essentially look like they're on a blitz. They both look like they're kind of they both the, the entire defense for the most part looks like a run commit except for these cornerbacks. That's one of the reasons this is also a very good base defense, a very good run defense. The cornerbacks drop back. This guy drops back into nowhere, by the way, which is kind of weird. Uh, there's nobody nobody there at all. While this receiver pulls this cornerback back, but you can see he immediately goes into like a man coverage. Um, but like I said, that's that's why you can run this as a base defense. You can run this as a, um, you know, if you come out and you're not liking the look, you don't have to go with the blitz. You can set this up to be a very successful base defense. So we'll go and we'll do that one more time. Like I said, this is the regular, this is the base defense setup. If you want to play it this way, if you suspect a pass, you can always do the full setup too, which is putting um, a defensive end on a three rec. Now, I'm not really trying to do that. Like I said, I'm trying to, I'm trying to make this a uh, an all-out blitz. So this is what we're going to do. And then we have two receivers on the field. So I'm going to use this middle linebacker and drop back. So we'll just go. We'll cover this gap like this. And then you can see this guy just coming right off the edge. And I tried to sack him, but I accidentally whiffed. Uh, but you can see, I mean, that's because a lot of that's because of play action. So let's go ahead and let's back out. Let's give ourselves some shotgun looks. So we went ahead and we went random gun. A lot of times you'll have to reset this uh, these guys entirely. Like on a play like this. I might not want to go to the full setup. I might want to go with the um, with the hard flats. But like I said, we're trying to make a video about something specific here. So like I said, I'm going to a lot of times I'll do this where I'll use this safety uh, because obviously these guys here, if they run like this setup, could easily be um, like something like a, a short pass here. So you can see. I mean, I, I really I, I think the running back is blocking there, but you can see the he got through. I was a little bit busy in coverage, so let's go ahead and let's take a look at the replay because I really wasn't watching. So, like I said, a lot of times, I mean, I'm sending like seven guys here, but it's really not about how many guys you send as much as it's just the fact that you're getting a free guy off the edge. And that's typically what's going to happen. You can see the running back was back to block. Both edge guys still came off, um, even though, it's, I mean, it's a seven on six, so at least one should come in free. Uh, but you can see here, I mean, a lot of times, like I said, I drop back with the, with the middle linebacker and you still get a free rusher. So we're going to do that one more time. Like I said, this here, you can see when I base in line the second time, it makes this guy come out. So I got a user bring him in. Uh, but to me, it doesn't, you know, this is a really quick, a really quick blitz setup. So I'm definitely going to probably back away. Like I said, I just try to press on the lineman there, and then you can see we're just getting instant heat. This time off the other side. Now you could also run the man blitz version, which I mentioned earlier. Uh, it's probably an even simpler setup, to be honest with you. I mean, all you really do is pinch the defensive line. You don't have to do the base and the, the show and blitz and pressing and all that stuff. Although you probably want to bring your safety across. Um, to be a little bit more in line with his assignment. Uh, but like I said, I don't really run a ton of man blitz online. I might throw this at my opponent every once in a while, but I like the cover four version a lot better. I know there's a lot of people online that run man blitz and are very comfortable running it all game. Believe me, I run into these guys. So if you're one of those guys and you want to try with this play, definitely, I, I definitely throw it into my arsenal from time to time. But I ultimately feel like uh, the cover four quarters is a little bit safer. And then you can see, I mean, you can get some, you know, they're definitely going to force quick passes. Like I said, to me, this is more of, uh, you know, something that I would run against um, against the computer in a solo battle. Um, but it's definitely effective against the computer. So if you're using it for that purpose, you're, you're all good. As you can see right there, we actually, I think both guys came off the edge on that play. And you'll get this sometimes. That's part of the reason that I stay home here at the middle linebacker spot. You can see because I basically press the center and then walk away that both of these outside linebackers come in free, which is essentially the idea. That's why I'm in the box uh, with the blitzed uh, middle linebacker because I'm trying to bring all these defense, all these outside, um, you know, the left tackle, the right tackle. I want, I want to really compress the offensive line towards the five guys in the middle and have hopefully they all engage and let these outside guys free. So let's go ahead and let's start off with the formation. It's the dollar three two six. I'm sure that you can use uh, similar formations like the one four six and stuff like that. This is one of the metas last year, but this really has some of the best uh, coverage formations in the game. Some of the best coverage plays, uh, and I'm. I'm going to start off with one of the ones that I showed you guys uh, in that gameplay video. To me, maybe one of the best defenses, especially past defenses in the game, and that's the cover three lock. Now, I'm not actually going to. I'm just going to go ahead and put these all in my audibles because this is pretty much the exact same setup that I use online. I keep the cover two man because cover two is still one of the best uh, man defenses. I put the cover three lock in. I'm going to replace the cover two drop. The next play that I would have in uh, would be the cover three cloud show too. Now, you guys know I use my three three five cloud uh, cover three cloud a lot. 
lot. I still do. It's still one of the better plays, but I really find that cover three cloud in general is a really good defense to run. So I'm going to put that there as the, thir as the third option. The fourth option, I really don't use this too much, but for people that like cover four, this is probably one of the best run defenses in the game. So the cover four drop. Now I would also say an adjustment that I typically make as well is I always want to put safeties at these linebacker spots. Uh, this is pretty much just how I run it. If you want to run with linebackers, if you play regs, I know me personally, I play mostly mutt. So I have like five safeties on my team that are absolute. Um, you can play them at safety, you can play the linebacker. So I have really good safeties. So if you have an extra safety or two, that's pretty good. You can put them here. Uh, but ultimately, I'd say it probably makes sense to still have one of your fastest linebackers because I'm going to be using one of these guys. And then I also want to make sure, I mean, I'm running a lot of zones. So make sure whatever safeties you have are high zone coverage guys. Now, like I said, I know I picked this as one of my first plays, but the first play I'm going to show, and to me, there's really two plays in this scheme that are the MVPs, and that's the cover three cloud show two and the cover three lock. The cover three lock is probably the most unique, so we're going to go over that first. Now, as far as cover three goes, there's a couple things that really beat cover three, and a lot of times, I mean, I, I use it a lot myself. Streaks right up the seams uh, through certain formations with certain setups are one play touchdowns against cover three. That's why having this guy on a man coverage, which is default, by the way, is a total, um, you know, it's a total lifesaver because it's going to take away any streaks. You also have this guy over here. Seam flats, if you don't know, if there was a receiver streaking in the slot on this side, I'll go ahead and I'll flip it. Seam flats over here, if, the, if that's a streak, he will drop back and he will follow that streak. Seam flats do that, curl flats don't. So essentially, if you have, um, you know, this basically this play has your number one weakness uh, when it comes to cover threes, getting one play one play touchdowns against cover threes is streaks up the seams. If somebody knows how to do it, which I've put out a lot of plays like that, this takes that away. So that's one of the better things about this. Uh, another, uh, the only real adjustments that I make, aside from pinching my defensive line because I essentially want to try to take away, it's not a great run defense, like I said previously. It's a, it can be an adequate run defense. I'll show you guys a run defense out of this particular formation later. But this play here is more of a pass defense. So I'll typically just try to pinch this defensive line just to take away any immediate up the middle stuff because those gaps are more problematic than anything. And then I'll basically just put one of these defensive ends, typically the one opposite the running back. We're actually facing the running back if it's in a shotgun like this. But typically the one uh, you know closest to the running back because if it's, an ins if it's going to be a handoff here, it's going to be an inside zone. So if I drop this guy back into a uh, bluff blitz, which is how I get that three wreck look, uh, I'm essentially going to be dropping back the guy that's going to be most responsible for stopping the run. So I typically three wreck one of these defensive ends. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter a ton. Then I'll blitz my user and I'll pretty much um, just try to freelance because that three wreck, that's another form of a man coverage. And I'll probably have to show this in replay. But if this tight end in front of me goes on a slant or a drag or whatever he does, he's typically going to be followed by the three wreck. So that really opens me up. We have basically three different man coverage assignments going on here that you typically they don't have in zone coverages that they're not true man coverages but they can react like man coverage the man coverage obviously is the three rec like i said it acts a lot like a man coverage to whoever the third uh the third receiver is that's what three rec stands for third receiver is on the field and then you also have your seam flat which can act like a man coverage it will follow from time to time so i have all that going on it really frees me up to freelance which is what makes this defense so good now, I don't really anticipate, I wasn't planning on running this in practice, because like I said, I did a full breakdown of this in gameplay, uh, and you're definitely going to see this more in my gameplay in the future, but you can see we have uh, some deep coverages, and there's nothing really open there, the quarterback's going to take off. So that's pretty much what you're going to see. Let's go to the replay to see what the three rep was doing. Like I said, these are max coverage assignments. These are max coverage uh, defensive plays. That's really the point of how I run my defense. There's really nothing going to be open. I don't anticipate getting a ton of pressure, but you can see right here, the three rec, he will follow that third receiver. Like I said, that tight end right there. As you can see, pretty much every here's, everything here is double teamed. This guy right here, he's double teamed because he's on a crossing route, which, you know, if you can double team every receiver, that's going to be a win. Uh, this guy here, like I said, the three rec does eventually follow. But even still, I mean, you can see how these guys communicate. The three rec is really in a position to follow that. I don't know if I have the right guy. Maybe Yeah, I do have the right guy. He, he'll he stay in the middle a lot of times, which is something else that makes the three-rec, in my opinion, really valuable. Because you can see me, I'm freelancing. I'm, t I'm going up to take away this deep route. I won't feel comfortable doing that unless I know I have a three-rec down in the box here, uh, basically eating up space. So like I said, if there's a receiver, he'll follow that receiver. You can see he does here at the start of the play, but then he also kind of lets it go when he realizes that the curl flat's going to take over. So right here, the curl flat drops into that underneath and this guy's doubled the whole way across the board that's the thing about regular zones 
uh, like hook curls. This hook curl, curl is worthless. This guy right here, he basically just drops straight back. And he doesn't do much else. You can see right here, once he goes across, fouls for a little bit, but he doesn't really do much. So that's why you need the three wreck. The three wreck and the bluff blitz is way more important. And then you can see when the play ends, he's my middle linebacker. He's covering right in the middle. A lot of times too, like that's why when he step up, steps up, I typically click the right trigger button in, push the right trigger button in, and then you can see, um, you know, that three wreck is going to typically be the QB contain as well. So that's that's basically the setup for that defense. My second favorite, like I said, that's the cover three cloud. As far as adjustments go, still making the same adjustments, still pinching the defensive line, spreading these linebackers out just a little bit. That's just to kind of keep outside containment. There's no running back in the backfield right now, so obviously I don't got to worry about it. Then I'm just going to, like once again, it's the same setup. Streak my or uh, put my defensive end into a three wreck and you know blitz my user. I mean, I could just as easily leave the. Um, Leave the linebacker in a three wreck and user a defensive end too. I don't have to do that. Like I, this is something. It's a little bit quicker and it probably makes a little bit more sense. If you're not good with adjustments, you can do that. The last thing I would do though is I would definitely you know bring these safeties over a little bit because that's one issue that this defense can have because it is a cover too. If a streak a lot of times can give problems uh, with this guy's in too far. If he starts off over here too much, there's ways to you know create separation with the cloud flat. You could just simple stuff like putting the uh, you know the receiver in the slot on a flat and then streaking the overneath route it'll just basically create separation so now typically i like to bring matthew over here a little bit get him in a little bit more position so that he doesn't have that issue of getting beat uh but that's pretty much it so that's pretty much the look uh and then like i said this here there's still you know possibilities as far as this play is concerned um i still have compared to cover through lock this play gives up a little bit more, but I do feel like this play also might get more turnovers in cover three lock. So that's the best way I would I would decipher these two plays. This play here gets more turnovers. Cover three lock's more of a shutdown defense. I'll definitely have more people, uh, you know, holding the ball and getting sacked uh, because there's just really nothing open. And then you can see right here. I mean, there's you know underneath stuff you'll have a little bit of that, but other than that, there's not really much to uh, go against when it comes to a play like this. So those are the top two plays. I did want to show you guys a run defense setup out of this. I'm going to pick the cover four drop container. This is probably the best run defense with the exception of the, uh, where is it out here, the cover 2 D fire. The safeties, if you guys don't know, cover 4 safeties typically will play, they'll play forward before they drop. Cornerbacks and cover 4s drop straight back, but safeties typically hesitate or come forward before uh, once the ball's hiked. So that's one of the reasons that this cover 4 is a better run defense than the other plays in this formation. So here we get a run. I wasn't expecting that. Like I said, I hit random outside run. Not really sure what I'm going to see here, uh, but that obviously... You know that was that was snuffed out so here we go one more time like i said i just the, as far as the setup goes i mean i'm bringing the these these safeties i you can just pinch the defense it's gonna it's gonna create a lot of this look uh, but i still want to bring these safeties down because it won't let me show blitz in a pinch defense for whatever reason maybe there's something that i'm missing but you can see i mean i'm shutting down i'm at a disadvantage and i'm shutting down these plays uh pretty easily so once again pinch defense it said these safeties stay back, but I want them down because they're part of the run defense, and then I just hard flat. That's pretty much it. Blitzing my user, obviously, just so I can have a little bit more range of motion and mobility, but you can see there's nothing really here. There's no real inside runs, no real outside runs. So the only thing, I mean, the, the only thing about this defense is you are undersized a lot of times, but like I said, if you have good safeties, you're playing mutt, you could easily, uh, you know, Give yourself a boost in size and put some good safeties and linebackers and stuff in there and it doesn't even feel that way but you can see there's really no holes i mean i'm using it pretty easily as well uh which really shouldn't be the case i mean there's they're coming out and you know this is a two tight end set probably gonna have no issue shutting this down one more time like i said if i got a few seconds of bringing these safeties down if they're really pounding the ball i'll use her as safety at the end of the day um you know what i mean that's that's something that you could also do to kick it up a notch uh, but I mean there's you know there's just no real holes here because these safeties play down like that there's no real gaps no real lanes so another play that I actually put out in the past uh, which still to me is one of the better plays uh, in the game as far as pass defense is the cross three fire so let's go and let's pick that cross three fire press on the offensive side we're going to go random gun so this play here once again all I'm really going to do is pinch this defensive uh, defensive line typically want to spread these guys and then the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put all my linebackers uh, although I gotta hit the d-pad twice on oh, no, my bed it's the d-pad d-pad to the right and then up on the right stick and you're gonna zone all what this is gonna do is it just kind of creates a, uh, a cluster of uh, zones right over the middle uh, and then your outside guys they're on seam flats like I said in a previous play they will follow a little bit better since you already have a three wreck on your safety which Tyron Matthews is gonna be one of my better safeties he will follow 
flow a lot better. So that's pretty much it. I'm just going to cloud the middle there. And then I typically use one of these defensive ends uh, to drop back and kind of free roam. So now there's really nothing going to be open. You can see the quarterback's not even going to wait. He's just going to take off because there's not going to be anything open against a defense like this in the pass. One of the points where I use this play the most uh, is sometimes like typically inside the 10, inside the 20. I find this is one of the best defenses to run. You don't want to get too close because obviously it's not a great run defense, but from a distance like this, I pull this out quite a bit because it's just impossible. There's nowhere to throw the ball. The, one of the few issues that this play could have is it is a cover three, so at the end of the day, there's ways to glitch cover three, but at this distance, nothing will get open. There will be nothing open. That's why I run this play so much. You can see Josh Allen's just going to keep taking off because he knows it. So this is a perfect distance for this. But like I said, you don't want to run this inside the five. Uh, unless you know you got a pass happy player. I mean, that's about it. Uh, but this is a play where, like I said, any. I also run this a lot on like third and longs, uh, you know, something like that. Any scenario where I think that the target area for my opponent is like five to ten yards. That's that's what I'm going to play with this because this totally clouds the five to ten yard marker. And you can see the quarterback just keeps taking off. And if I was just. Uh, basically, if I was using the quarterback a little better, he wouldn't be getting nothing because it's really just quarterback run after quarterback run. And then last but not least, the cover two man is probably uh, a still a play I use quite a bit. I'll go ahead and I'll pick that. Uh, random gun once again on offense. So, same setup as before. Pinching the defense. Pretty much all I'm going to do. Uh, and then three wrecking one of the ends. That's pretty much all I'm going to do. I still find that man coverage is one of the better... Uh, you know plays to run man coverage is still pretty tight I don't feel like it's as good as it was you can see quarterback still taking off nothing really open uh, That's kind of the trend of this video. I haven't touched on the three four under now This particular play that I'm going to show you guys today I actually found when I was labbing a new book I was actually messing around with the Tennessee Titans playbook a little bit and I found a very good blitz out of the three four under that just so happened to be in the Kansas City Chiefs defensive book So it's the play at the bottom there the will fire three seam like I said if you watch my videos You saw this in a gameplay video video um, two days ago and like I said I'm gonna have more because it's a very good blitz it's a very easy blitz to set up uh, as far as a, you know who you want to have and what positions here um, I would say the most important positions to have speed would probably be this linebacker here which I already have and Willie Gay and then the other spot would probably be uh, this guy here Ben Neiman um, but I'm not really sure I mean the Chiefs don't have a ton of speed of linebacker so this is a blitz you can run I'm also gonna show you guys some variations you can run for coverage uh, but ultimately this is pretty much it now as far as as, um, you know, a lot of people ask me, like, what would my zone drops be and stuff like that and coaching adjustments. On a play like this, I'd probably go curl flats 20 uh, and maybe hard flats, um, you know, 5. Regular flats, maybe 5. Um, you know, you can mess around between 20 and 25. That'd probably be uh, where I would have my flats at most of the time. But that's about it. So this is a very easy play. Let's go and let's pick that. We'll fire three at the bottom. On the offensive side, I mean, this is probably going to be best for people that run stuff under center. Um, you know, the gun formations, I mean, you don't want to run this against somebody that's in like an empty backfield or too spread of a look, but you can. I would say up to three wide receivers, you can get away with it. For now, though, we'll start off a single back and we'll work our way back to some gun stuff. So let's go and let's pick this. Now, as far as this play goes here, uh, a formation like this, an offensive formation like this might mess with the alignment just a little bit when you have that three tight end look. A lot of times it will, um, you know, force... Uh, the look to change a little bit, but it doesn't look like it did on this particular play That's one of the things I like about this play. It's a pretty uh, Consistent setup no matter what look you're looking at if you're coming out if they're coming out a little bit too much like You know wide gun formations a lot of time this blitzing linebacker will be out a little bit far uh, But all I'm really gonna do is I'm just gonna hit the d-pad to the right and down and that's gonna blitz all that's all I'm gonna do I can typically use her either this guy here who's a safety will give me a little bit of speed um, on a formation like this though based off the fact that there's three tight ends and I don't really worry about them beating me speed wise I might bring this guy over and just use her the middle safety I just have to keep an eye on um, you know that receiver all the way out there but he's pretty much gonna be taken care of a lot of times these these uh, zone coverages are gonna turn into man coverages based off of the fact that there's not a lot going on in their area so that single wide receiver over there I'm not too worried about like I said a lot of times I will use the safety uh, just to give myself an extra box defender uh, and then we'll go ahead and we'll let this play run like I said hopefully it's a pass on this very first play you can see the pressure comes around the edge and of course the guy that I'm supposed to be covering is the guy that makes the catch because I'm not paying attention so let's go let's do that again like I said it's a really simple setup all I'm gonna do for the blitzing version of this defense is blitz all and then I really have a couple of different options that I could do a lot of times if I want to play it safe I'll use this guy 
But if you have people that are, you know, hitting flats a lot and stuff like that, you can leave them out there. You can hard flat them. You can, you know, do any number of things um, to that side. Uh, but let's just let this blitz get home one time before we go over the different variations that you can run. Uh, because this plays a good base defense, too. It's not just a blitz. Uh, as you can see on the next play, like I said, we're just going to get, you know, so you're going to get a lot of pressure. You're sending, obviously, you're sending a lot of people. So here's a scenario. We have that bunch look. Um, this is a scenario where if I want to, I mean, I could easily, you know, since there's no real tells, since you're not making any movements to set up any blitzes or anything like that, um, you could easily, you know, use this as like a coverage play. Maybe you can Mabel on this side here. Um, you know, there's any number of things you can do. You can, you can do, uh, you know, Mabel's on both sides. Uh, and you can have like your traditional uh, defense. Obviously, these guys, you know, I, I think you can get pretty decent coverage. Obviously, this is a safety, so you're going to get good coverage on that side. Um, a lot of people like to run more safeties than what I'm getting. But like I said, if you have speed guys on the outside, you'll have definitely good coverage out here. I don't think running a Mabel concept against a computer is going to be a good idea because they'll just wait you out. But a lot of times, if your opponent is reacting to the blitzing, you could easily just switch it up and go with something like this, which is something that a lot of people are doing. Doing. And then you have that cover three look, which a lot of people like anyway. And like I said, based off the formation, you get pretty good run defense. And the fact that this defense sets up so quickly too is definitely a plus. So we'll go and we'll do that one more time. And then I think I'll end this video with some gameplay footage of me running this. As you can see once again, I mean, the pressure just gets there instantly. Let's go ahead and let's go to uh, a replay real quick. So watching it in replay, once again, like I said, this guy here, who's like the original blitzer, he will come in free a lot of times. You can see right here. I don't know why he decides to slow down and pass off. Like I said, it works a lot better in Mutt, but you can see we're still having success. This guy here off the edge, it almost looks like I didn't guess pass. I'm not even 100% sure if I did. But this guy here off the edge, he's the guy that gets a lot of pressure too. Like I said, you want to have speed at this out that guy because he pretty much just sprints right in and gets an easy sack so that's one of the things about this defense you can do it's two different ways you can set this up there's two different ways a multitude of ways that you can run this and you can really have a lot of success so there's a lot of different things you can do with this defense it's nice that you have a three wreck as your middle linebacker rather than a lot of you know i used to put a lot of a lot of times I put my defensive uh, end into a three rec uh, by simply bluff blitzing them, which is, you know, it's not as good because you're, they don't have as high zones and stuff like that. So if you're playing regs, this is definitely something you could do. I would say it would be best probably um, if you want a little more pressure, you can just Mabel the side. Like right here, we have three, uh, you know, you got your three receivers on the right side. Just Mabel your three, um, you know, the, the, to that side, really the open side of the field, which most people work. So, you know, there's several tells in which you could just Mabel one side and then the other side you still have a four-man pressure although ultimately you know you're not going to get as much pressure as you would as you're sending the full blitzing version but there's a couple different things you can do and then this three wreck here if one of these guys crosses a lot of times the three wreck will take care of it so i would use this guy like i said this is something where you could use that guy you can maybe borrow this guy here there's a couple different things you can do but you can definitely set up a normal defense uh you know a normal all zone max zone type of defense and you can see we're still getting pressure nothing gets open as the guy's taking another sack so like i said a very good defense a very good play i'm using i'm definitely mixing this play in a lot that also really stops the run this play is another play that i use out of this formation that really complements it so that's why this particular play that i'm going to show you today the cover four quarters goes with it so well because it's really a good one-two punch today we're going to focus on the cover four quarters we're going to focus on the uh the run defense and like i said it's also a pretty good pass defense so let's go ahead and let's pick that like i said i am in the uh, kansas city chiefs defense which is like i said it's my favorite book it's the only ebook i made this year if you guys want to get more plays out of this playbook, you guys can check that out. Link in the description below. On the offensive side, I just want to go random uh, because, I mean, I try to give myself the best challenge possible. Since we're going to be doing a run-stopping video with a run-stopping defense, I'm going up against King Henry himself. Uh, you guys probably know. I mean, I like to think that I was one of the first people that discovered how good cover four quarters is. I don't remember a lot of people running that. Uh, but since I put out a lot of cover four videos a couple of months ago, uh, it seems like a lot of people are, are running this defense now, or at least a lot of the YouTubers are, are wise to it and putting out videos about it. Uh, to me, it's the best run defense in the game, bar none. And this particular formation just has a really good spread to the point where it's a very good defense. It, it complements the cover four as well. So this setup is going to look kind of similar to one that I put out from the 4-3. Uh, I put out one from the 4-3, even 6-1 as well. I mean, there's a lot of different defenses that I've, I've put out from this particular playbook. But all I'm really going to do to make this a very good... Or shutdown run defense is i'm gonna hit y or triangle depending on whether you're an xbox or a playstation i'm on xbox so it's y then i'm going to hit the left stick to the right which is baseline then i'm going to show blitz 
And then I have a choice at this point. I can base a line again, uh, which in my opinion is probably the better way to go, but it really depends on what you're looking at on the offensive side. So like I said, that, that linebacker there, I'd probably prefer him in the box. Uh, but ultimately, I mean, if I'm trying to stop the run, I'd probably prefer him in the box. Uh, but, you know, it's also not a bad idea to have somebody right in front of the receiver take away any quick throws. So it's really up to you. If you think it's going to be a runner pass, this guy here, like I said, that, that can change based off the of play, uh, from play to play. Uh, the next setup would be all I really want to do is hit that wide triangle again, and then I'm going to hit down the right stick to go underneath. Now, this is, like I said, if we're really trying to set this up for run defense, this is pretty much going to be the look. I'm going to bring these safeties, uh, you know, in a little bit of a better position. But ultimately, that second base line that I did was just to drop these cornerbacks back. When you base the line one time, they come down. When you base the line again after showing blitz, they back off. But the safeties stay down. That's the most important part because these safeties are going to be the MVP of this entire defense. If you don't guess pass, which, like, i, I got to be honest with you, I do guess pass a lot. I guess pass probably 90% of the game. But if you don't guess pass on a, in a situation like this, these safeties will turn into supermen. And they'll either, if it's a run play, they'll shoot the gaps right away. They'll, you'll see, if you watch them, they'll both come flying down. If you, if you guess pass, they won't do that. They'll just drop back. So in this scenario, don't guess pass, don't guess run, just let them make the reads. I'll put my uh, my my defensive or my linebacker here. I'll put him on a uh, a blitz. Uh, and to be honest with you, I accidentally messed up there, and I did guess pass. So I don't know if that's gonna mess up the whole play. But we'll go ahead and we'll rock with it. So like I said, this is the look. I don't know if I messed that up, but we'll go ahead and we'll let this run. Like I said, I'm just going to blitz my guy here, but like I said, I also did guess pass just out of, you know, like I said right there, you see they drop back. That's why you don't want to guess pass. I'll go to the replay to hammer that point home because it was it was a mistake. I didn't mean to do it. I just did it out of instinct because I do it so often. Like I said, I guess pass, so they immediately get out of the box. Anytime you guess pass, even though it was a run, they immediately drop back. And that's why it's best to not guess pass in a formation like this when you're trying to set this up for run defense. So I definitely made a mistake there, but we'll do it again. So like I said, we're just going wide triangle, base align, show blitz. And then like I said, I like to base align again. Uh, it, that part's really up to you. Sometimes I don't base line the second time. But if you got these cornerbacks right in these receivers' faces and they are on a streak, a lot of times you can get cooked. So to me, I think it's, like I said, depends. Sometimes I draw back, sometimes I don't. And then like I said the real uh, important part of it is um, you know not guessing pass which this time it will not guess pass and you will see how if it's a run they'll play it much better you can see right there that was actually pretty decent running did he hit the cutback lane uh, but ultimately if I go to the replay which is probably the more important part is these safeties here like I said they shot down into the box and played the run immediately because these when any cover four you have the safeties will typically come forward. That's typically how cover fours are designed for these safeties to step forward first. So let's go and let's do that again. Like I said, uh, this time here, I'm, if I'm really trying to go run heavy, I don't base the line again. I also like to use uh, the safeties a lot of times in this particular defense, but since I'm trying to make the point of how well they uh, play the run, I won't uh, use them right now. I'll just use the linebacker. So like I said, right here, now you can see, I don't know who's making a play there, but I think it was the linebacker who's instantly in the backfield. And then we go back to that uh, instant replay once again. Like I said, I did not guess pass. You'll watch these safeties. They typically just come right forward. It almost looks like I'm run committing. But you can see based off the fact that the cornerbacks are dropping back, it's not a run commit. So these safeties here, when you don't guess pass, in this cover four quarters, they will immediately shoot forward. And they'll make a lot of plays. Here they pretty much just stacked up. the, You know, like he couldn't go this way. Safety was in the box. On the other side, you know, if you if, if it looks like he's shooting for this gap, but the safety's right there filling that hole. And then you can see, obviously, the linebacker comes up the back side but where's the hole right now for this running back to make a play everything's covered up by you know majority of these safeties dropping into those into those boxes so here we have another look this is obviously a run fit look we'll go full setup here one more time and like i said i just blitz uh blitz this guy here for some reason he's not doing like i said this would be the look right here so full full run commit to the extent I mean, it's not really a run commit, as you can see right here. I did not run commit. That was just the, how the... And then, like I said, it's a pretty good pass defense, too, as you can see. I typically use this as a short yards play. I typically use this for uh, goal line, for, uh, you know, fourth and one, third and one, something like that. You know, that's typically when I pull this out, when I really need a, a good defense that can get a stop. But it's also not, uh, you know, still a good pass defense on top of it. So this is pretty much the look right here. If this is an inside zone, it should do a pretty good job of shutting this down. Uh, now you can see, like I said, as far as the pass defense goes, you get pretty good coverage. As the coverage was everywhere. You know what I mean? So it's not just a run defense. That's one of the reasons that I like this, this cover for court. I love 
love cut four quarters to start but this is definitely uh, one of the better ones because of the alignment. Like I said, the way that these defensive linemen especially are evenly uh, set up, I mean, it's a good wide formation. You can see on both sides, whenever you play run defense, you want both sides to basically have outside leverage. Right here, this linebacker gives me outside leverage on that blocking tight end. So if it's a stretch, he's going to get outside of that, especially if I hard flat, because he's, he's definitely going to get there if I hard flat, because he's going to shoot down to get to the hard flat space. So this is, you know, perfect for outside containment. And then this guy here has pretty good outside containment as well. Um, you know, just to start the play, which is typically what you want. Then on the inside, there's no real gaps. I mean, this is pretty much any defensive lineman should be able to handle the assignment size of these gaps because it's pretty evenly spaced. So that's one of the reasons that this play works so well. And then, like I said, it's almost like having four linebackers behind the defensive line because these safeties here, along with these linebackers, will shoot down and make a lot of plays. So this is pretty much going to be my look. Like I said, I'm not going to get cooked with these uh, safeties being up like this. You can see, like, there. I mean, we actually got some pressure, but it was a pretty well-covered play on the backside anyway. So that's the thing. Like I said, this play here, very good run defense, very good pass defense. Uh, but you probably don't want to run it against a spread defense like, like this. Anything that's too far spread out, you really want to save this for run-heavy players or run heavy situations so like right here i'm not guaranteeing it's going to work against this particular play but it is a two tight end set and they can see once again derrick henry's really going nowhere and i didn't even have the full setup in and i didn't even have the full setup in on that last play i didn't even have the hard flats in but it still looked like it so you know base line show blitz that's pretty much it and then you really have a lot of different options here. The bat, the box is just absolutely stacked. And the large part of it, like I said, I think is the cover four quarters itself. It's just a really good uh, play. And you can see the quarterback really doesn't have anywhere to go. Is everything's pretty much locked up again. We're getting a lot of covered sacks. Next up, we got the two deep gap shot. So this defense here, I typically want to shift it to the left. So this defense right here, I typically want to shift it to the left, put this guy on a bluff blitz, and then come down in this gap right here. This is pretty much the look. I'm going to try to get either the defensive end on the right off, as you can see right here. He pretty much comes in free uh, with the tight end just trying to chip away, and then Carson is running for his life. I'll do that again. Let's be able to do that one more time. Like I said, just shifting that, bluff blitzing, coming down this gap right here. Then we'll do this again. I said here, I mean, I'm just, you know, he, he's going to get off pretty free pretty much every time. That's a check and release that's kind of working out in my favor. We use it against a, a shotgun play. Typically trying to give two different looks. To show you how consistent this can be against different plays. Uh, I also forgot make sure to guess pass. Uh, which I did not do. Let's do, let's do that one more time. We said guessing pass is going to be important. So one more time. Bringing this guy in. Like I said we're just trying to get him off the edge. This is the look. The last look was a blocking running back. This is a look no blocking running back. And you can see. Actually he did block. That was strange. I thought I picked the play with no blocking running back. But you saw the guy gets him free. He just has to beat the back. We'll go to the replay real quick. So I try to choose a play with the two different looks, one with a blocking running back, one without a blocking running back. But you can see he's coming in free pretty much every time, uh, and then he gets cut cut blocked by the back. So this is, like I said, I, I intended this to be a look where there was no blocking back, but you can see if he comes in free. The last play, I think he had, had a blocking, ba had blocking back, and it was the same idea. So we'll do this one more time. Like I said, the, the running back is blocking, so it might not you know go off without a, without a hitch, but we'll do this one more time. I say, you see the guy's coming in free, and he's, he's decking Wentz. I mean, a simple uh, play-action fake, and he's in right, you know, slapping the quarterback before before he even has a chance. So it's a good defense on the backside, too. Next up, we got the cover one, Sting Weak. So this is another play. All I'm really going to do is I'm going to slide the uh, or shift the entire uh, line, bring this guy over here a little bit. Obviously, we want to be in position here. This guy here, you know, we're going to we're gonna man align these guys back. Uh, but ultimately, guessing pass and then bringing this guy down here. I'm putting him on a uh, QB spy once again to try to pull uh, pull my defense, oh, pull the offensive line over. And then you can see we're just getting that edge pressure one more time. So, really simple setup right there. Go ahead and we'll go to the replay. 
there's definitely short routes that the computer could have got rid of this ball. Uh, but like I said, once again, we're just putting him out wide enough that we're getting a one-on-one -on -one here. And we're getting this outside uh, blitz. You can see the running back's blocking, but he's just in no position because of the play action. He steps up into the pocket, and he just comes around. It's really that simple. It's a really easy play. I don't even necessarily have the fastest guy doing it, but you can see how simple it is. So one more time, like I said, shift that line. Bring this guy over here. Bring my, I got a man to line him back. Like I said, I want to make sure I bring him back, especially because of the, the opportunity for a run play. Guess, or, uh, guess pass and then QB spy and come right in this gap. That's all we really got to do. And then, like I said, I'm just going to try to stick around just a little bit just to make sure that that lineman doesn't doesn't peel back. And uh, that's it. That's all she wrote. Next up, we have the cover two man. Make sure you put, um, if you don't, depending on what defense you're running, just make sure you have some speed at the edge. Uh, because these guys are going to be, um, you know, you're basically your coverage guys. So make sure whoever you put outside, uh, typically linebackers are going to have high zones and good speed. This is just a good base defense uh, against under center looks, two tight end looks, stuff like that. Um, I typically find spreading the linebackers and pinching the defensive line is uh, is a decent look, but you could also go the opposite direction. If you think it's going to be an inside run, pinching the linebackers and spraying the defensive line uh, is a pretty good look. But ultimately, I think spraying the D-line, because if it is an inside run right here, you have three linebackers just waiting in the hole. So there's a number of different things you can do if you're expecting a run, as you can see. I mean, we have a pretty good a pretty good setup. It's not the best run defense in the in the book, but it's something. This is a good base defense for either run or pass. Now, if you think it'll be a pass, uh, you have a couple different options. Typically, I want to put one of these defensive ends on either a hard flat, depending on down and distance, a curl flat if it's a long, like a third and long or something like that, or whatever, like a third and eight would be a decent time to use something like this. Um, that's going to be one of your options. Uh, but typically, that's going to be something you want to do to supplement, um, you know, coverage underneath these man coverages. That's basically the idea. The man coverages can't get B on slants and stuff like that. So having this guy in a curl flat is going to undercut a lot of those type of routes. Uh, typically, which side to do that on? Because you can put both sides. Um, you can put both defensive ends. Uh, on, on those type of routes, but since there's only one guy on the left side, you typically want to do it where there's the most receivers. So there's two tight ends and a receiver on the right, that's where you want to do it, that's where you want your help. If it is a slant, it's on me to cut that off on this side. Basically, there's one receiver, that's going to be something I have to pay attention to, but ultimately, that's where I want my help. You also have the option, if you want to, to put this guy in a vertical hook if you want to try to help get help taking that away, but then you only have two pass rushers, certain leagues don't allow that. Uh, it's a little bit questionable, but this is pretty much how you want to run your base defense as far as this concerned. So I don't know if it's going to be a run or a pass, uh, but you can see even with all those adjustments, it was still a very good run defense. Next up, we have the cover nine. As far as the cover nine goes, I just think a lot of people have a hard time beating cover nines. There's nothing special about it. I would set it up uh, Pre-snap, I would set up something kind of like this. Since you have a cover two here, I mean, all these four-three defenses are best for people that are under center. Uh, but ultimately, I, I would set it up uh, something kind of like this, where you're basically just uh, bringing these guys in for run lanes, and then you got your cornerback here. I just keep him outside. Um, but ultimately, since he's in a cover two, you can bring him down, which is nice. So you have what looks like a four-four setup uh, inside the box. Uh, which is going to be best against uh, run, a good run defense. As you can see right here, we get a good run, and he gets nowhere. He gets about a yard. Uh, but ultimately, like I said, it's just a good play uh, to mix in because people just don't have um, – uh, people just seem to have a hard time throwing against defenses like this. They just don't diagnose it well, and they typically don't do a good enough job of uh, – most people don't know how to hit home runs against it. Uh, so it's something that I definitely mix in from time to time. Here's a pass play. You can see right here, I mean, the coverage was there. Uh, but ultimately, like I said, it's it's a little bit of a risky coverage, but it's something that I, I def definitely recommend throwing in uh, to your rotation, as I didn't get to set the defense that time. Um, so, so right here, like I said, we get a deep pass. I mean, the coverage is pretty good on the backside for sure. Uh, I would say what's the, what's the most spotty um, is the uh, is the mid to underneath coverage. This is another scenario too where I would typically. Um, I would typically put one of these defensive ends into a hook to give myself even more coverage. Like I said, if I'm if I'm cover if I'm in coverage, I'm in coverage. If I'm blitzing, I have my blitz plays for that. But this is typically the look, just so I can make sure I'm taking away all the intermediate stuff because the backside's really solid. So it's really the intermediate stuff that I, I, I find um, needs the most help. And then you can see right here, I'm not even really covering anything, and we have coverage, you know, all over the place. So like I said, a really good defense to mix in. Next up, we got the fire. Next up, we got the free fire three.
this play here, all I want to do is spread and shift. That's all we're going to do. Uh, and then we're going to bring this guy down here, put him on a, um, a bluff blitz. Make sure we guess pass once again. If I have time, bringing this guy out is going to be uh, a good idea, but um, it's not something that you have to do. Uh, it's just going to make the play a little bit better. And then you can see, I don't know if I didn't guess pass there because he didn't come off that edge. <clears throat> Against... Um, you know, I'm just going to spread this this defensive line here, and I'm going to shift it. And then I'm going to bring this guy outside. That's pretty much all I'm going to do. Bring this guy here down, bluff blitz him, and that's pretty much going to be the look. This is a look where, I mean, I don't have to be on all on the edge, but I can be. But this is a look where you're either going to get um, either outside pressure or, in, or right up the A gap there. As you can see, got it out short, but the guy was coming off the edge. We'll do that again. So like I said, shifting this whole, buddy, this whole thing over. Get this guy over wide. And then just bring this guy down, put him on a bluff, and make sure to guess pass. And that's all we're doing right now. So, guess and pass, trying to pull this guy here right in front of me. And then you can see he's coming off the edge. Barely got a handle on me. It's a quick, you got to get the quick pass out. So, we got the quick pass out twice. Like to get that sack look. Um, like I said, we just got to maybe, you know, if I leave him a little bit closer, maybe I'm not, maybe I'm moving him out too far. Um, you know, it's it, it's that that part's a little bit touchy, but like I said right here This is pretty much the look and I also find it best to have this bluff blitzer all the way out To try to pull the line as much as possible because bluff blitzing really does work and then boom there We get the the sack which should have been a sack, uh, but you can see I mean really probably the most important part is the gap that I'm in So let's do this one more time Set so bring this guy over here bluff blitz him guess pass and this should pretty much be the look right here. So now we're going to get that edge pressure. And then Wentz is getting planted. And we almost got an interception too. But you can see he's coming off the backside really easily. Next up we have the zone linebacker blitz. This play here, just put the X, um, I mean the, uh, the defensive end on a blitz. And then gas pass. That's pretty much all I'm going to do. I'll step down into the box here. Uh, put my own user on a QB spy so that I can try to pull blockers. Uh, but ultimately, this is it. You're going to see a lot of times you'll get edge rush like you did there. And then you also had a, uh, an A gap in his face, but Carson got it out pretty quick. Then we'll go to the replay. There's a couple different ways to run this. I'll show two different methods. But like I said, right here, you're going to see this guy. He, we have two guys coming. So we either had a guy coming in free. Maybe if I had a little bit more speed there. Um, I don't know who I have running that. I guess I have two of my better pass rushers doing that. So we're going to do that again. Like I said, all we really have to do is guess pass. Put this guy here. In a uh, in a blitz, this is pretty much one of the methods here. I could also put him on a on a uh, QB spy or um, a QB contain, because I'm ultimately trying to get the middle linebacker or the linebackers in anyway. And then you can see right there, well, that's we get the pressure, we get the the hit, but you get to throw out a sack animation. So like I said, since we're trying to get the inside guys in, it also it ultimately helps to try to get these defensive ends out wide. So here they're in the uh, they're in the the edge contain. Which is also going to be helpful too, because the computer's not necessarily going to roll out, but your your user opponent will a lot. So we have the A gap coming in on both sides, really. Both linebackers are really coming in. The, the, the blocking back has to choose. So if you get a rollout, you're going to get a sack. If he doesn't get rid of the ball immediately, you're going to get a sack. So like I said, it's a six-man blitz, but it's still a really effective one. And I have six blockers, so it's a six-on-six six with two guys coming in free. Next up, we have the OLB Fireman. I find this is a good defense against inside runs. I like to spread the defensive line and pinch the linebackers. Uh, we're basically, like I said, so it looks like there's a gap right in front of me, but the way these linebackers fill, uh, the safeties fill because they're manned to the running backs, it's usually pretty good at stopping inside runs. So if somebody's hitting you relentlessly with inside runs, uh, this is a good option. I also typically like to bring this safety down so he's right in front of, uh, of the, of the uh, tight end that he's covering. Uh, but ultimately, like I said, I mean, I don't really have to do too much. There's no real gaps inside to run on. I'd say it's also a good idea considering that it would make it weaker outside to bring these uh, these safeties outside just so they can kind of contain uh, if it does if they do decide to hit you with an outside run. Next up we got the safety blitz three. All we're gonna do here. Bring this guy outside, pinching the line. If it's, a, if it's the threat of a run play, it wouldn't necessarily say pinching the line, but pinching the line, bringing this guy right in here before I drop him back as a user. This is pretty much going to be the look. I mean, the safety is going to come off around the edge. Forgot the guess pass. 
So different look now. Pretty much the same idea. I mean, if it's if the running back's blocking, bringing these guys both out to the edge is going to make the most sense. Uh, but ultimately, where like the running back, considering that he's facing uh, the direction he's facing for any play actions or handoffs, you actually want to make sure that you you do the uh, the shift in the opposite direction for two reasons: one for run defense, and then two because uh, the backside guy is going to get the pressure. So coming down on this gap once again. Now we're gonna we get caught up on the on the spot on the spot there the block caught us but you can see how um, nobody really picked it up let's go to the replay quick like I said my intention was for this guy to get picked up by the running back uh, but he came around and the running back did eventually pick him up because he's facing him that's why I was saying that based off the direction where the running back is looking like here he's looking to the left so if it's a play action or a handoff he's going in that direction meaning that the backside guy is going to get him and you can see right here that I mean the guy doesn't even really block him he makes a kind of an attempt but it was he kind of just whiffs and just goes right right around him pretty quick so you really have two options here both guys are coming off the edge um, but ultimately one of them is going to get picked up by the back so we'll do that one more time same look with the shift like I said it's best to set these guys up before you make the shift because you can see how um, how they're backing off there I mean, I can I can also use her the the middle linebacker there, but you can see he's in a, he's in a deep third, so or deep middle third, so it's best just to use one of these guys, and then bluff blitz this guy here, guess pass. Like I said, that's always important, and this is pretty much the look. Either one of these gaps, it really doesn't matter. Um, and then you can see that time uh, he comes off the edge, and the running back doesn't even have a shot. So you know, it's something that uh, it really doesn't matter which gap you're in. The most important parts are getting these safeties to the edge, and making sure that you get your. Um, Get your uh, your um, your user into the into the hole here with the bluff blitz. That's pretty much it. So as long as you can get this part of the setup in, um, you're gonna have pressure coming off the edge one way or the other. So like I said, I mean, if you have to sacrifice, just getting one of these guys out uh, is typically enough to get pressure. Because getting them both out is a little bit, uh, it's a little bit risky to get to try to get them both, um, to try to you know maneuver them both around before your opponent hikes the ball. Uh, but you can see, I mean, we're getting pressure from the, the whichever guy is outside, whichever safety you can bring down, you get another sack there. Whichever safety you can bring down before you set this up is going to have the success. You have to do that. The bluff blitz and the guest pass are the most important. If you can get the shift in too, that's obviously a good option. But um, but this is pretty much the look. And there, I mean, the running back just doesn't get around in time. As you can see, we get another sack. Next up, we got the safety blitz. So put these, put the uh, guest pass. Try to bring these guys outside. You know, if you can only bring one, that's fine. One of them will do. Bring this guy down to the gap. That's pretty much all you got to do. Uh, like I said, guessing pass is important for the for the speed of this blitz. You can see here, both guys get off the edge. The running back doesn't block either one. Uh, but if you can only get one. You can only get one down the box. It doesn't, you know, typically the one opposite uh, where the quarterbacks, like right here, there's two tight ends on the one side. That's typically the one that I'd want to bring down if I can. Uh, you know, like I said, if your opponent's running plays quickly or running a hurry up, you can see how, I mean, definitely the play action is taking them out of the play, but this is an easy play to run. In a shotgun look like this, where you don't know, uh, like this single back look, you don't know which direction the, the running back's going to go. Here you do. He's going to go towards the quarterback. So it's best on a play like this to do the backside guy because he won't be he won't be looking. And then bring this guy over the center here uh, because you're, you don't want to block the other blitzer. So ultimately, this is going to be the look here. The running back's going to take himself out of the play, and then you're going to have, I mean, ultimately, they're both coming in easy. Uh, but you can see how simple that is. So, like I said, against against uh, a shotgun where you know where the running back's going to go, the backside guy is going to be more important. So we'll do it one more time. Make sure you guess pass. No real other adjustments needed. Then just come back down to this gap. And then, like I said, both guys are coming in. The running, back's, running back pick one up there, but it doesn't really matter which one he picks up. Next up out of the 4-3 normal, we have the weak slant three. Against under center defenses, obviously there it's a it's a larger package. It's a four three. Uh, all you're really gonna want to do is shift to the right, and typically you're gonna want to bring this. Uh, this is your user. You want to bring him in as close to the uh, defensive end as you can. You also want to guess pass. 
Uh, that's basically just going to make sure that these guys get around the edge. So, like I said, this is your user, so you want to have a fast defensive end. You can see how it'll come off the, the weak side edge. If you're doing this against uh, somebody who has an option to run, like say it's like a second and long or third and long, this is best. But if you're going against somebody who has an option to run uh, and you're you're, sli you're sliding this guy in all the way like this, at the very least, you want to bring this guy in to protect yourself uh, against run plays in that in that direction. Uh, but ultimately, it's not best to do this if, if your opponent has an option to run. So like I said, we'll do it again. Real simple setup. Shift to the right. And we're just going to put this particular player that I'm using on a bluff blitz and uh, hit a, uh, you know, guess pass. And that's pretty much it. Now we're going to have, you know, all these players are going to react to me. You can see it just comes right off the edge there. Um, he got the ball out, but you can see, I mean, that's just something that uh, he's just spraying right off the edge. Let's, go, let's watch the replay real quick. So like I said, whether it's in... Uh, in you know single back or shotgun you can see i'm on the right guy but you can see this guy here he just comes straight off the edge there's there's nothing there i wish he took more of a linear path but it's still a free blitzer that's the bottom line and then the running back is taken up by the inside blitzer here if the running back he really has to choose between the two one of which is going to get through pretty much every time you can see we have a free guy pretty much every time next up we got the will to fire So another play we're going to shift the defense and then we're going to take our user down here we're going to put him on a uh, a bluff blitz and guess pass that's pretty much the only look we're going to go for here and you can see how the guy comes off around the edge there but the running back did pick him up and then wins is running for his life uh but you can see i mean that's the bottom line is you're getting that outside pressure so we'll go ahead and we'll do that one more time shift Guess pass, bluff blitz, bring him down this gap. He said, if you have time, bring him out. It's going to make that uh, his his opportunity to get away from the blocking back a little bit better. But you can see it's pretty consistent. He's coming in unblocked most of the time. Right there, he comes around him. Try to switch over and finish that. But the bottom line is, you're seeing the looping pressure that you're getting. Go to the replay on that particular play. It's, it's not really much to it. The fact that I moved him out a little bit on the second try is why he had a better opportunity to beat that running back. You can see right there, he kind of got suction blocked, which in my opinion is BS because right here you can see he's he's right at the guy's face. Ultimately, though, without a blocking back, he'd be playing in Carson Wentz within the first couple of steps. Next up out of the 4 3 under, we have the cover two man. So this is a good base defense. Uh, I find that uh, I typically want to have it lined up, man aligned, and then kind of looking like a 5-2. I'll take the guy over the running back uh, in hopes that the running back doesn't, um, you know, go out on a pattern. Then I can kind of, you know, I can roam free. Uh, but ultimately, I have the option of putting one of these defensive ends in either a curl flat or a hard flat or whatever extra stuff I want to do. Typically, I want to do that on whatever side has the most receivers. I find that against run defense, it really doesn't make a huge difference to do that. Um, you can see, I mean, you know, they're pretty much a coverage sack. I, I really didn't do too much. Uh, but, you know, good coverage on, on uh, whether it's run or pass. Um, typically, I mean, if you're against a three-wide set, you don't want to do it. Like, I'm in a three-wide set. I'm in a disadvantage here with the linebacker. But if you're going against heavy sets, you'll find it's a pretty good base defense against both. Next up, we get the FS Fire 3. So this is something I typically use as a run defense. Uh, just bring this guy down here um, so he's right at the line. And then typically I either hard flat or just I'll straight up just blitz this guy. Make sure he has outside contain. Typically cover threes are not that great uh, when it comes to uh, to runs to the edge. Uh, but with that type of setup, it's going to force a lot of runs back inside like it did there. So we have essentially a stretch. It's a stretch alert looky, but um, if we set this up properly, uh, we're going to have, uh, you know, Pretty much, uh, pretty much good outside run containment and uh, inside run containment. As you can see, my opponent's pretty much, you know, left with no option to go back inside. Against inside runs, um, there's no real difference in setup. You have the option if you want um, to put the, uh, the defensive line on a pinch, uh, but I find it's not really necessary. It's pretty good gap control, and then you can see with the if you're running in the direction of the blitzing safety, you're gonna have a free defender stopping the run by itself a lot of times. Next up, we have the Mike Sam Crash Press. So this play here, all I'm going to do is I'm going to shift the whole line and bring this guy here out a bit. Then I'm going to put this guy here on a bluff blitz and bring him down into the gap and guess pass. 
and that's pretty much going to be all she wrote we're going to get some edge pressure we're going to get some a gap pressure as you can see right here basically it was a switch pressure which is why that worked we'll go to the replay basically a lot of times these edge guys will switch and give up the inside lane but it really doesn't matter because it's really a two on one you can see he's got to choose one and they're both at a disadvantage so it doesn't really matter the running back is blocking but he's basically taken out of the play uh, with the play action and then we get edge pressure pretty much you know pretty consistently next up out of the big nickel over g we have the cover two man make sure you have safeties at the linebacker spots so you have speed and you have linebackers at the end spots so here we are i mean this is a good pass defense we have a lot we have safeties at linebackers so that's going to help me with speed uh you have linebackers at defensive ends typically they'll have a little bit of more mobility a little bit more um, you know more more present ability to cover but higher zone coverages I typically want to put uh, one of the defensive ends uh, whichever one's on the side of the field that has either more receivers or more space on uh, this actually it's actually this side so I actually messed that up but ultimately yeah you're gonna want you have two receivers on the left side so I'm gonna want to put that guy plus the running back accounts as a receiver so three on one side so we're gonna want the extra defender I typically want to uh, make sure that I'm taking away any gaps shifting the line if it's like a if it's an inside zone here shifting the line to try to take that away a little bit is going to be helpful and this is pretty much going to be the look uh but you can see the man coverage is going to take away stuff like uh like bubble screens i feel like man cover two is one of the better ways to go this year um you know it's as far as coverage and pass defense but it'll still have the same weaknesses that typical zone coverages will have uh there i didn't actually cover the running back but that's something that i'll do it's just a calculated loss to lose a couple yards no big deal uh, but ultimately, I mean, it's just a really good pass defense. It's one of the best in this book because of how many DBs you have. Next up, we got the cover, cover six trap. Cover sixes and cover nines are just good defenses to mix up. My pre-snap alignment, I typically want to borrow this guy here, bring him over a little bit. Uh, so we basically have like, uh, you know edge containment to this side i'm going to play like this i mean obviously if it's a run it's going to be to this direction so i'll shift it a little bit but i find that you can just you can set up a good run defense pre-snap i don't know what the play is going to be here i have it on, on random uh but you can see i mean it's a good uh, it's a good defense on both sides it's just a good run defense it's good pass defense it's just a good base defense i definitely mix it up uh, in my gameplay quite a bit um, I find that most people don't know how to read it they don't know how to diagnose it and they don't know how to one play it more importantly so a lot of times they're just just guessing so this is not something that I run uh, a lot necessarily but I run it enough I mix it in enough that I really have found some really positive results uh, that result in a lot of interceptions and stuff like that when people don't know what they're looking at next up we got the strong safety blitz too So this play right here, I'm just going to bring this guy down outside a little bit, uh, shift away, and then we're going to go ahead and blitz this guy right here on the on the outside edge. We have to we have to position him so that he goes right for the uh, right for the gap here. So now we have him in an A gap, and then we're just going to guess pass, bring this guy down, and this is going to be our user. We have to use it quite a bit over the middle, but the, the ultimate goal is to get these these edge pressures, which are really fast. So it's worth it. I mean, if they, if they get the pass off, even in this scenario, which is, like I said, it's a shotgun look, um, it doesn't even really matter. So you can see right here, once again, we'll do that one more time. Like I said, well, I'm going to come over here where there's two linebackers, uh, but it really doesn't matter. I mean, you can really come down to whatever gap you want. Um, I'll do it again on both sides, and then we're basically just getting an instant edge pressure. So right here, I mean, if you want to do it the other way, where you're... Um, say you want to you can bring this guy over like i said i can switch this guy make him the blitzer it really doesn't matter but it typically has to be this setup where you have to be on this side of the play so we'll go ahead and we'll do that like i said qb spine can uh, help pull uh the blocker a little bit more um as you can see right there I actually got stuck on the blocker but the blitz is so fast it really doesn't matter so ultimately that's all that's that's important next up we got the weak safety blitz too Very similar play to the Blitz 3, and we're going to do the exact same setup. Um, there's no real adjustments different. We're just uh, bringing this guy down here, uh, you know, shifting the line away, guessing pass. Uh, we forgot we got to put this guy, got to move him over a little bit, put him on a Blitz. 
Uh, pretty much, you know, I like the cover three a little bit better because I like the, the safety in the box and the ability to blitz that guy. Uh, but if you like to run cover twos, I mean, this is a little bit more responsible for you as a user. That's the thing. Cover three, it feels like I, I just... I just feel like I don't think cover two is as good this year, uh, for one thing. That's that's probably one of the bigger things. Uh, but ultimately, I feel like um, you know I just feel like the mount that I have to cover, like the backside might be covered a little bit better, um, you know. But ultimately, I feel like me as a user, I really have to cover more in the middle here, uh, which I don't like. But we're getting you know really good pressures. That's all that really matters, I guess. Next up, we got the weak safety blitz three. So this play right here, we're going to want to flip this uh, whatever way the direction the running back is going towards. Like here, he's going to run either if he runs an inside zone, he's running in that direction. He's running to the left. If he does a uh, play action, he's going to the left, all that stuff. We're going to want the guy coming off the backside. So we're going to go ahead. We're going to uh, shift the entire defensive formation in that direction. Then we're going to put this guy here on a blitz as well and use the safety. So this is basically going to be the setup, guess pass. And the guy's going to come off the backside edge. Now, I'm pretty much going to be using the entire center of the field with the safety here. Uh, but that's fine because the pressure's worth it. And you can see right there, I mean, we come off and we get a sack fumble. Uh, with two guys, really, we're getting the pressure there. But you can see how easy that is. So, like I said, once again, if we do that from the other direction, a lot of times uh, the running back will pick up the blitz a little bit better. So that's why it's best to do it this way. Like I said, shift away. Put that guy on a blitz so he can come right up the A-gap there. And then we're just basically, we only have five defenders. But I have, you know, faith in myself based off of my usering and how fast the blitz comes in. Then I have no issue covering these routes uh, for the few seconds that they're available. So based off of how fast um, this blitz gets in and, you know, how, how short of a time... Uh, a user will have to throw it. You do have to center this guy, though. You have to center this this linebacker right over the middle there so he can get a straight path. And like I said, I'm basically playing middle linebacker at the safety spot, which should be no problem considering the, the lack of time uh, that the, that we have to throw the ball. And I didn't really see what happened because I was using that. So I'll have to go to the replay real quick. Uh, I didn't really see uh, if we had a lot of pressure there or not. So like I said, let's watch that one more time. So it got picked up pretty good, but the running back did get pushed. Uh, the guy did push the running back into the quarterback's face on the throw. If you run it like this, I mean, you can run it like this where, where he's going in that direction. It won't really change too much. Um, you just have to basically set up the same way. Blitz this guy right up the A-gap. Um, I typically, honestly, I could use that guy. I could, I could drop this guy down and have a similar effect as well. Make sure he gets past, though. Um, and this is going to be a very similar look uh, where we get that same pressure. But you can see, obviously, the A-gap got picked up by the running back. So it, it, it can really work either way. It's really just up to how you do it. And like I said, you got to bring this guy here uh, right in the center there, bring him over that gap. So here he's actually doing that for me. So I'm just going to leave it. You can also, and if you want to, you can even uh, you know put him in a QB spy, uh, which helps to pull blockers a little bit more, in my opinion. Uh, but like I said right here, we're pretty much going to do that look again. And we're getting edge heat right off the back side. Next up, we got the cover for drop contain. This entire formation is like a third and long, fourth and long type of defense. Uh, and this is this is no exception. So if your opponent really needs a lot of yards fast, I'm bringing up the cover for contain. Say he's down, a touchdown, uh, you know, it, with a under man to go or something like that, no timeouts. It's a perfect scenario you're going to use something like this. I typically pinch the line just to take away any uh, any out possible running, uh, you know, running lanes. And then, like I said, I mean, if the running back has a, has a possibility of going in this direction, I'll bring this guy down pre-snap just to have him in that position. Then I'll bring this guy over so I have an ability to cut these lanes off but ultimately, this is, like I said, it's just a straight pass defense. These these, these uh, safeties do a pretty good job of dropping down on run plays. So if it is some sort of inside zone or, or something like that, they do a pretty decent job of taking that away. And then ultimately, like I said, you're not going to get a lot of passing deep. So this entire formation is really good when it comes to, uh, to passing situations. Next up, we got the cover two man. So this here, once again, I mean, it's just, there's nothing really to this. Um, it's just, uh, you know, an all-out uh, cover, two, cover two defense. 
if you're getting a, a lot of uh, it's like a third and long fourth and long situation type of thing this guy here i feel like he's in, he doesn't really do much as a blitzer so i can either put him in a qb contain which is something i'll typically do if i'm if find myself against a running quarterback or if there's three receivers over here i'll put him in a hook curl or put him in a uh, a, a curl flat or a hard flat whatever the down and distance is he's pretty much the free defender on a play like this uh, once again though I typically only use this formation or this type of play on a, a third and long or fourth and long passing situation the cross three fire press this defense here all I typically do with this is guess um, guess pass and uh, make sure that I zone all the linebackers uh, that's typically just something I'll do on like a third and long Something I've been doing for years. It's a really effective uh, pass defensive clog in the middle. And then obviously, you have some really good... I mean, I have to make any of these adjustments I'm making right now. <laughs> I'm just kind of moving them in. Uh, I typically like to leave it as is because uh, it just it's really difficult for your opponent to diagnose. Typically, if they want to hit something over the middle, there's nothing there. And then the outside cover three does a pretty good job of taking away deep uh, passing lanes as well. The only thing you really have to watch is the uh, anything up the seams. And that's still... Obviously, the, the hook curls do a pretty good job of taking that away as well. So I find that uh, I, I typically want to use this guy. I don't find bringing him down uh, pre-snap is necessarily the call. Uh, but it's something that, uh, like I said, this here is just typically really, really clouds in the middle. Um, and then there's just a bunch of bunch of jerseys around the ball. So ultimately, you know, like I said, no real adjustments needed other than, other than bringing the... Um, you know, basically putting the, the middle linebackers in the zone all. Um, I also find, I mean, I, I typically like uh, to, to, to pinch these guys just in case we get a, uh, you know, a, a, any any type of inside run. Um, you can do a pretty good job of just pinching the defensive lineman and then just moving the linebackers out. They'll do a decent job of taking care of the run. But it's ultimately like a third and long, fourth and long. It's pretty hard to, to throw into that. Next up, we got the DB fire two. I find this, as far as the run defense goes from this formation, I find this is one of the better ones. Obviously, the outside runs aren't going to do much. Uh, the only thing is you don't really have a lot to take away the inside runs. Uh, you can pinch the defense for inside runs, but that's probably your best option. This is not something you necessarily want to use if inside runs are, are, are necessarily, I mean, inside zones and stuff like that can really give it problems. But you can see, like I said, edge runs really are going to get taken care of pretty well. So cover twos in general, I mean they're just they're good they're good runs. So just bring this guy in. That's pretty much it. Make it almost look like a speed version of a of a three four, and you're pretty much going to have um, as good a contain as you can expect against you know people that are coming out in a lot of wide packages, uh, like uh, like gun packages like I'm doing right now. So like I said, just pinching, bringing this guy in. So you know obviously if he's if it's an inside zone or a draw or something like that, he'll typically come off the edge and take care of that. Against pass plays, I should have did a better job using that, but. Uh, ultimately, like I said, this is more of a run defense from this formation because you have so many extra blitzers. Next up, we got the cover three cloud. I like this defense. There's really nothing uh, too special about the setup. Um, it's just something that your opponent's not necessarily going to uh, going to account for. It's it's very unique. It's not like a traditional cover three or something like that. Your opponent will either have a hard time reading it, and if they do read it well, they're not going to have an easy time. You're going to have a lot of coverage sacks, a lot of interceptions, um, a pretty solid run defense. Uh, your cover two cornerback here, I basically just base a line uh, and then um, show blitz a lot of times, although you don't necessarily want to do that with your cover three cornerback and be split out wide here. I mean, I'll just walk him back. Uh, but ultimately, I like that hard flat being down where he is because that's a really good edge defender, uh, especially in run plays. Uh, but ultimately, like I said, I mean, your opponent's not really going to, they just typically don't have a guy like whiff on the tackle. They just typically have an issue uh, diagnosing it. So it's a really good play to mix in with your, uh, with your base defense packages. Next up, we have the Buck Slant Show 2. So this play right here, I'm just going to bring this guy out a little bit and bring him down the line. He's actually in pretty good position already. Uh, move this guy back. I'm going to bring my guy down, and then I'm going to put this guy right here in a bluff blitz. Uh, and then I'm going to put myself in a QB, QB spy so I can draw the attention of the line a little bit better. Then you can see right here, I mean, ultimately, um, I didn't guess pass, but we still got the sack. I forgot, but you can saw the guy hesitated there. Go to the replay. Um, but yeah, that was the one part that I missed there. If you guess pass, he won't hesitate like he did on this play. He'll just come screaming in. Uh, but you can see here, he just like kind of stops up because I don't know, like maybe he just thinks that it could possibly be a run, but uh, ultimately we'll get a smoother transition if you guess pass. So I'll go ahead and I'll do that again. Like I said, we're just going to put uh, this guy here on a bluff blitz and bring this guy down, put him on a, on a QB spy. Um, like I said, I like this guy out a little bit more, a little bit down the line, but it's really not 
you know, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter as much as the two that I did on this side over here, the, the QB contain and the bluff, the bluff blitz and, and, and the uh, stacking this gap. Although, I don't know what's going on here as he was standing up kind of, you know, lazing around. But you can see he comes around the edge. Both of them came around the edge pretty well. Uh, and it's a very simple setup, a pretty easy to set up play. Next up out of the nickel normal, we have the cover two man. This here is one of my more favorite base defenses when it comes to passing defense. Um, if you have uh, more receivers on one side than the other side, like right here, there's three receivers on the right side, three receiving options. I'll typically just give myself a zone uh, in that direction from one of the defensive ends, which is an outside linebacker, just to help out. And then, um, you know, if the running back goes in that direction or something like that, I typically can freelance a little bit more uh, in the middle. Uh, it's a pretty good run defense. First play didn't really work out too well, but ultimately online when I use this, I find it, uh, the run defense is pretty solid. Uh, no real adjustments other than that. Uh, but like I said, right here we have three receivers, four actually, including the running back. Um, so this is something where I'd make that adjustment. Then I'd also typically shift away from the, you know, like in a shotgun like this, um, it can really only be a run like that anyway. It can only be a run in the direction of the quarterback, really, so I'll shift in that direction. Um, that's pretty much the adjustment. So like I said, right here, shifting. Uh, we have multiple receivers over there, so we'll, we'll give ourselves an extra defender. And that's pretty much the look. This is pretty much how I would set it up. And it's a pretty good defense against the runner pass. I don't really have too many issues there. I just got burnt by the running back. Uh, but like I said, you still got the same issues you would have against normal man. Slants, uh, comebacks, stuff like that. Drags are still going to give man, you know, just like they give man issues typically. But I still find this is one of the better defenses. As the, the ball got hiked before I was even ready. I was ready to end the video there, but yeah, you can see how this just uh, still works out. Next up, we have the safety strong three. So we're going to pinch one more time. You can align. You can uh, hit wide triangle, then base align so that um, your, your, your coverage is a little bit further back with the uh, cornerbacks because uh, obviously you don't want that to be pinched. But like I said, this is pretty much the look. Hit the safety down the box. I don't think I did the, uh, the bluff blitz, and I'm also going to put my dude in a... Make sure I guess pass as always. Like I said, I can come right over this, right over this tackle, right over the guard or guard center combo. I mean, uh, and just try to pull it right there because ultimately we're just coming around the edge anyway. He actually got chopped, but he got over and got the sack anyway. So pinching him one more time, bringing this guy in, guessing pass. Like I said, base aligning to get him back, and then you know. Bluff blitz and my boy here. Like I said, it doesn't really matter what gap you're in. But trying to pull this, um, pull the line in one direction is typically going to help. And then we get an easy sack as he comes flying through. Uh, a little bit of a switch block right there. But you can see it's coming off that edge quick. Next up, we got the under smoke two. This player finds best just to uh, pinch the defense. And that's pretty much all you have to do. Um, and then guess pass. I also like to bring this guy down right over the gap. And I find that this is going to do best to get the edge defender off. As you can see here, he just comes around the edge, pretty much hiding uh, from the running back, even though he was in the area. So, like I said, it's just uh, RB, R1, and then down on the left stick. And then just walk this guy down into the gap uh, and guess pass. That's, like I said, it's always most important when it comes to getting uh, fast edge pressure uh, before you drop back. There, I don't know what happened. He kind of got like, that was a dumb animation, to be honest with you. That was, that was a cheese animation uh, where the running back like blocked him with his back. I'll go to the replay on that. That looked uh, that looked exactly like I think it did. So let's go and let's watch that one more time. Like I said, it looks like he's around the edge here, and somehow the guy came back in. I mean, that's just a, a stupid animation that got triggered, but he definitely should have got that sack. So we'll do it one more time. Pinching. Bringing this guy down, guessing pass. That's really all we have to do. Um, to make this a consistent uh, edge rush and you can see right there he gets sacked by his running back because we got a dumb animation again but it counts it's all that matters next up out of the quarter normal we got the cover two spy this is something that only really works in empty backfield looks uh, but for some reason all you really have to do is bring uh, this linebacker down over this guard and you're going to see this uh, this this cornerback a lot of times just goes right around the edge. I mean, this defense is kind of glitchy as far as that's concerned. Even if he doesn't necessarily go right around the edge, a lot of times he just misses. I'm only guessing pass, too, by the way. But a lot of times the def the, the tackles just don't really... If you watch the animations, um, they just it just goes right around them. So this is something that... I mean, I wasn't really using too good. Uh, but this is something that uh, definitely, um, you know, has its effectiveness. We'll go ahead and we'll do that one more time. 
I said, all I'm doing is bringing him around the guard here, and he just, just loops right around him, and Wentz is in trouble. So, I don't know what it is about this particular play. It's not in a lot of playbooks, but it's an absolute glitch. So, all I'm really going to do on this play is bring this guy down, uh, guess pass. Uh, that's pretty much it. I'm just going to have a very similar effect where we're just going to have um, guys running off the edge there. So, like I said, guess pass, bring this guy down. If I have time, bringing this, bringing this uh, blitzing corner back in uh, would make the most sense. But if I don't have time, like I said, we're going to have a pretty easy setup. I also think uh, putting this guy on a bluff blitz would also help out with the pressure. Uh, but like I said, these things are all, you know, they're all not 100% mandatory, as you can see. I mean, we're getting some really fast pressure, once again, from that safety. So I feel like this formation as a whole has something to do with it, but ultimately that play uh, is working the best. As you can see, once again, I mean, the, I'm, I'm just watching that dude coming around uh, and not really get touched by Lane. We go to the replay one more time. As you can see right here, I mean, he's just he's just sprinting in here. You know what I mean? Like it's just it's just insane. How, uh, how how he's just not getting touched at all on, on pretty much all these these plays where he's just I mean I don't know that extra <laughs> I don't know if that extra blitzer coming in off the far edge has anything to do with Lane's decision making here but this is pretty incredible so another really good play need more help or just want to show your support then head over to my patreon and join my team where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays as well as early access to my bids and more link in the description below